Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Malley here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for July 15th, 2022, around 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Not too much to talk about today, but we will take a look at more tropical cyclones forming in the East Pacific when the Atlantic Basin will wake up and a look at some severe weather across portions of the South and North United States today. So let's go and jump straight into everything. Taking a look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that everything is pretty quiet across the tropical Atlantic, at least for the time being. That is certainly some good news. We have an upper level disturbance right now approaching the Bahamas and Florida. Now, this is not expected to develop into a tropical system, but could bring some enhanced shower and thunderstorm activity to the Florida Peninsula over the next couple of days. We have some ongoing active weather across portions of the north. We'll talk about that later today. We have Tropical Depression 6E and a slew of tropical waves confined to the intertropical convergence zone in the main development region, which is not expected to develop over the next few days. So again, tropical development in the Atlantic Basin will be pretty much shut down for the next five days. And realistically, I believe that this will extend for the next couple of weeks as the unfavorable background state is just not going to allow for much in the way of development. In the East Pacific Basin, we have Tropical Depression 6E, a newly formed tropical depression located at 12 degrees north and 100 degrees, 100.8 degrees west here. And so if we take a look here at the overall storm today, we notice that again, it's become a lot better organized uh, since we last talked yesterday. So the first advisory has come out and the National Hurricane Center is forecasting this to become a Category 2 hurricane as it passes well to the south of Mexico. And then this will be moving off into the subtropical Pacific here, but this is not expected to bring any substantial impacts to any part of Mexico over the next couple of days. And then also now in the central Pacific basin, that is, this has now left the East Pacific domain. This is now in the central Pacific. This is Hurricane, uh, well now actually Tropical Storm Darby rather. So Darby has weakened from a hurricane back to a tropical storm. You notice that there's not really much left and this is expected to pass well to the south of Hawaii. Still the potential for some isolated showers uh, and gusty winds to be passing to, to, into the island really. Uh, but other than that, there's not really anything that's expected in terms of substantial impacts. This could continue down the road into the West Pacific Basin, but we'll have to see how that extends out with time. So looking at what to expect over the next couple of days, first of all, in the GFS forecast, this is the 850 millibar vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground. So we're looking at the low level vorticity here. And we notice that again, there's just not really much going on in the tropical Atlantic for the next couple of weeks. There does appear to be a couple of stronger tropical waves that come off of Africa and into the main development region, but pretty unfavorable conditions will exist at least for the next several weeks. But we can start to take a look at what to expect over the next couple of weeks into maybe the next month or so. If you look at the Madden Julian oscillation forecast here, this is basically a measure of where the long term upward and downward. Air, moving air really is. So we have rising air and then we have sinking air. And so wherever the MJO is, that's the Madden Julian oscillation, that basically is where all the upward moving air resides over a specific region of the world. And so these are very slow moving events. And what we can see here on kind of the spaghetti plot is that we have the MJO right now. This is uh, about the 18th of July. This is located over the Western Hemisphere and Africa. And this will eventually be moving from a phase one into kind of this phase two slash three throughout August. And this actually supports Indian Ocean movement and upward moving air over the Indian Ocean and Africa. And kind of this is actually one of the best phases for tropical cyclones to form and for enhanced activity to be over Africa because if you have the MJO over Africa, it's not actually seeding the Indian Ocean per se. It is, but it's not as prevalent. And so you have a little bit of a sinking branch over the Indian Ocean, but with this being firmly in the Indian Ocean, this actually seeds both the Indian Ocean and Africa at the same time, allowing for the potential of continuous waves of tropical waves to be moving 
from the Indian Ocean over Africa, then into the Atlantic Basin, where development thereafter is somewhat possible. So if we kind of look at this here, this is a graphic from Andy Hazelton over at NOAA HRD, the Hurricane Research Division. And basically what this shows is where we have potential Kelvin waves in the atmosphere. Now, what this basically shows is that we have upward moving air at 200 millibars. This is the 200 millibar velocity potential anomaly. So everywhere kind of in the red and orange, that's sinking air and teal green and these blue and cyan colors, that's upward moving air. So that supports tropical cyclone formation. Now, over the next couple of weeks here, this is off the European, over the next couple of weeks, again, we'll be in this pattern where we have kind of this phase where we don't really have any development that's anticipated. We have a suppressed phase of the Kelvin wave that will be standing, kind of just sitting over the Atlantic for the next couple of weeks. Now we notice though, as we progress forward with time though, we notice that this actually changes and we kind of get this African standing wave here, this, this ASW here to develop over Africa and the Indian Ocean from really late July in through mid and late August, this seems to be the pattern that we are in. You notice that these Kelvin waves stop necessarily progressing over and we just get this large column of upward moving air in the Atlantic. And that's very good for tropical development. Now we can see that again, we may see a burst of activity to help see tropical waves late July. And then that kind of shuts down but again, there is a lot of interseasonal variabilities here. This is a 46 day forecast. So there is a lot that can change, but generally speaking, we'll be seeing this sinking air generally over the East Pacific while we have rising air over the, the Africa and the Indian Ocean. And that definitely goes to support the favorable pattern that we will be seeing over the next couple of weeks. And to kind of further, you know, prove that favorability is coming, let's take a look at the European ensembles and the MSLP anomalies here. So this is sea level pressure anomalies, departures from average. And again, the reds here, that is higher pressure, blues are lower pressure. And we noticed that over the next couple of weeks, again, right now, we're kind of in this pattern where there's about normal to lower than average pressures. That will begin to reverse and we pretty much exclusively remain in lower than average pressures across the tropical Atlantic all the way out through the 30th of July based on this forecast. And again, this is the European ensembles, so a little bit more accurate than what the GFS is predicting right now. And that certainly, again, goes to show that we have pretty favorable conditions, at least down here for additional warming of the deep tropics. And if we take a look here at the upper level wind environment at this time, again, this is pretty anomalous westernlies, or I'm sorry, easternlies in the upper levels here. And I mean, this really goes to support that in the upper levels, there's good favorability for tropical development because we have this African easterly jet that's coming off of Africa and it's basically coinciding. It's not reversing the winds in the upper part of the atmosphere. And so as these tropical waves move westward, these winds are actually allowing for that outflow to expand and develop. Now, we do have some unfavorable conditions out here across the Caribbean. That's kind of still to be expected in the month of July, going in early August. But generally speaking, all this seems to be pretty favorable, at least for the time being, as we progress through early uh, August, from late July into early August. It seems like we'll be talking more about tropical development uh, once we get to this certain point. So we'll have to kind of keep an eye on that. Now, shifting gears and focusing on the severe weather aspect of everything today, we have a couple of risks for severe storms today. Uh, first of all, we actually do have a marginal risk for severe storms today, generally from Orlando, Tampa, Miami, southward to Key West. And we also have a slight risk for severe storms today across portions of uh, Billings, Montana, all the way through portions of North Dakota. And again, no tornado risk for today, but generally across both portions of Florida and the Northwest, hail and damaging wind will be the primary threat, especially in Florida and up here across the Northwest U.S., including portions of Montana and North Dakota. It seems like damaging wind will be the primary threat. There is a mesoscale discussion for a severe thunderstorm watch that is likely to develop here. Basically, a developing cluster of thunderstorms is expected to develop here, and we can actually kind of take a look at that if we look at the model fill at this point. So we'll look at the HRRR forecast and see what we can kind of get into. 
you can kind of see that it seems like we have kind of this developing multi clusters of storms not really one solid area where we get kind of a nice squall line but it seems like multiple areas into even portions of southern canada developing all the way down here and a kind of another area within this mesoscale uh, discussion right now so it seems like we'll have that complex of storms developing within a few hours and then that will be kind of moving off towards the west here and then eventually uh, this kind of develops into a more solid line from about minot north dakota all the way uh, to just a couple hundred miles west of bismarck and uh, pretty much right along that corridor there so we'll have to kind of watch that but again no tornado threat today is expected with that and if we look at our dew points right now dew points are not incredibly high but you don't really need uh, sufficiently high dew points out here across the northwest u.s to really get any sort of major development it looks like these higher dew points will be further towards the east here as we get further into north dakota uh, so we may see more surface-based storms developing and transitioning over here but as of right now you know tornado threat is expected all right so that being said hope you have a great rest of your afternoon evening of course i am michael romali and i'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow